This episode of Destructoid is brought to you by Jack Threads. On today's Destructoid show, the PlayStation Vita might not be for sale yet, but it's already on sale. Get your Xbox Live avatar some sweet ink, and do you want to date a girl with no arms because 4chan has a game for you? Get the full story right here, right now on Destructoid. Welcome to Destructoid, I'm Tara Long. And I'm Max Scoville. You're looking healthy today, Max. Thank you, I got a haircut because I wanted to look less douche. I was gonna say you looked a bit warm on the last episode. Yeah. Yeah? I was having yeah. hot flashes thanks yeah. for being sensitive. Jokes. Fuck. Jokes. So before we commence today's program, I wanna make a quick announcement regarding our affiliation with GoDaddy, who have obviously come under a lot of fire lately due to their support of the Stop Online Piracy Act which, as I'm sure you know, threatens to unravel the very free internet under which websites like Destructoid operate. Now, Destructoid.com declared their stance against SOPA a week ago before announcing that they were terminating all business with GoDaddy, who previously provided hosting for our website. As I'm sure you guys know, an episode of our show aired during the holiday break that was sponsored by GoDaddy. And so I want to clarify that A, that show was pre-taped and recorded before all of this came to light. And B, you will no longer be seeing another GoDaddy sponsorship on our show for the foreseeable future. Yeah. Thank you and, and good night. I'm, it's like three in the afternoon. <gasps> All right, well hurry Shh. up then. And, and C, I worked really hard on that video and you guys were jerks about it. <laughs> okay, um, I'm, we're not done about this, this thing yet. Um, if you guys haven't heard the ESA, the Entertainment Software Association, they're the guys who put on E3 every year, they've come out in support of SOPA. Now, considering these were the folks who thought that support, uh, they wanted support from everyone on the internet, um, for video games being protected under the First Amendment back in June's Brown versus mm, ESA, EMA Supreme Court case. Um, they're, uh, they're kind of sort of trampling on the First Amendment a little bit. So maybe maybe a little bit hypocritical on their part um, that they'd come out in support of, of something as stupid and ham-fisted no. and evil as SOPA. Now, love him or hate him, Destructoid Reviews editor Jim Sterling has drafted open letters to the game publishers that are members of the ESA as well as the ESA itself and he's provided a list of emails and contact information for all organizations involved. If you guys hate SOPA, go make yourself heard about it. Uh, gamers made enough of a fuss online. Well, gamers always make a fuss online. That's just yeah. a thing you do. True but you guys got Nintendo to localize Xenosaga. That's a video game. This is the internet as we know it. So please, just this once, follow the link in the episode description and go email some publishers. If you do us that one favor, uh, we'll be very appreciative. And after that, you can go back to leaving yeah. comments demanding that we show us our tits. To show use us to the you. internet for good for once. Yeah, use for the, internet the internet for good and tits. <laughs> um. <laughs> All right, so let's get, let's get on with the news. Let's do that. First up, the PlayStation Vita. It's been out in Japan for two weeks now and has gotten a relatively lukewarm reception so far, especially considering the success of the PSP in Japan. But despite a reported 324,000 units sold in its first week, second week sales dropped down to just 72,000 units sold, with not even a single Vita launch title making the top 20 software chart. Ouch. On top of that, sales for the 3G model have been far worse than sales for the Wi-Fi version, so much so that some Japanese retailers are now cutting prices on the 3G model by as much as 5,000 yen, which is around 50 US dollars, in order to stimulate demand. Now, personally, I thought the 3G version sounded way cooler than the Wi-Fi until I remembered that you have to buy a $15 to $25 a month data plan with it, and <clears throat> then I just, I just hugged my 3DS so tight and begged it to never leave me because $170 3DS, $500 a year PS Vita. Yeah, I, honestly, the 3G thing just kind of uh, turned me off from day one because, yeah. like, uh, let's see. I'm trying to think of places that don't have Wi-Fi. I mean, they have airplanes with them. They have laundromats with them. Like, I don't know where you're going. That like the bus. Are you or going to like I Death guess. Valley to play fucking Monster yeah. Hunter? Like, who, who does that? Yeah. Um, okay. So anyway, last week while we were on vacation, a piece of news dropped that is just too ridiculous not to report on. And I'm sorry if the news is late, but I've been dying to talk about it. As of January 1st, that was New Year's Day. That happened already. In case, no sorry. Yeah, um, Microsoft made an effort to um, remove all gun-like props from the Xbox Live avatar marketplace. Oh, thank God. Yeah, it was getting violent on there. Yeah. Wow, oh boy, look at that. Um, this news came from Epic Games, who announced a week beforehand that the Gears of War Lancer and Hammer Burst avatar props would no longer be available. People already paid for them, get to keep them, but in the future, Microsoft does not want our avatars doing anything remotely violent, do they? No. no they don't. We wouldn't um, want to scare the 12-year-olds calling oh, you a twat muffin children. on oh. Xbox Live. They're so busy with their racial slurs. Um, 
It doesn't really take a whole lot of critical thinking to realize how stupid this is. Avatars are glorified buddy icons. Who gives a shit about whether or not they're holding virtual guns? The Xbox Live dashboard is riddled with ads for Modern Warfare, Battlefield, and Gears, and mm -hmm. Axe Body Spray. Um, guns and video games have always gone hand in hand. Like, what does it matter if it's, a, if it's your avatar holding one? Um, anyway, those of you who are mad that your avatar's Second Amendment right is being violated, and you want to rebel in some other way, <laughs> Uh, good news, Microsoft announced today that tattoos are now available on the Xbox Live avatar market. Uh, you guys frequently accuse me of being a hipster douchebag, and I'm probably going to dig myself a little deeper for saying this, but these tattoos are all fucking lame. All of them. Uh, whoever designed these tattoos probably stopped paying attention to pop culture sometime around when Sum 41 was popular. Uh, specifically, mm. they got some really like lame, lame things here. Specifically, the um, the kanji characters for love and peace, the tribal tattoo, which is oh so politically correctly listed as pattern tattoo. Uh, we also got flames, stars, butterflies, and a heart with the word mom on it. Nothing wrong with star tattoos, but I I will say like it pains me to admit it, but they probably chose these because they're the most popular tattoos. Yeah. Well, hey, what does that say about America, Max? That's not America, man. Or, that's, or that's human that's race in general. People who get tattoos, which are dumb people like me. Uh, the only cliches they've left out are barbed wire, a pair of swallows, uh, and then of course there's the ever popular Tasmanian devil dressed up as a firefighter. I'm actually um, surprised they don't have the barbed wire. I figured a lot of Gears players would be into that. I don't know why one. they don't just have the COG logo. That's a, that's, that's a, people have a tattoo that. What about a barcode? Barcodes are cool for gamers. You guys. I bet Epic will do that now that yeah. I can't sell guns, you know? Yeah, gotta have that. Anyway, yeah. um, I have a tattoo of a flying bear giving thumbs up to a bottle of Mountain Dew, so I probably shouldn't talk shit. This is true. Um, but if you guys want to spend real world money to modify your Xbox Live avatar bodies, go right ahead. I would just rather have a fake gun. Oh, a fake gun, gun, you say? You, well, I hope you pre ordered Mass Effect 3 do then. They have fake guns? I hear it's just full of them. Oh, good. Yeah, fake guns, not real ones. That would be dangerous. Bioware announced their pre order bonuses for the game, and I was hoping it'd be something super exciting like a Wolverine claw or a metal jock strap that shoots lasers out of your dick, but they just. They just went with guns instead, which is okay too, Born I guess. Bioware. Every pre-order, regardless of the retailer, will get the M55 Argus Assault Rifle, but if you order through EA's Origin Service, you also get the AT-12 Raider Shotgun, which provides superior rapid fire on close range targets. GameStop pre-orders also get the exclusive N7 Valkyrie Assault Rifle, which fires two rounds per shot with superior accuracy and the N7 Defender Armor, which boasts improved shields and health, amplified weapon damage, and increased ammo capacity. Now, based on the outraged comments from our 2012 predictions episode, I think you know what I'm talking about, Max, mm -hmm. I'm gonna go ahead and guess that you guys like Mass Effect, but I'm actually curious to know how many of you have pre-ordered the game already, and for those of you who have, did you do it for the sweet bonuses or the prospect of receiving it on day one without having to go to the store? Because I, I tell you what, that's a pretty sweet deal. Just having it mailed to your doorstep the day of release. Yeah, that's pretty I hate cool. having to go to stores day one. I hate having to go anywhere. Yeah, also that. If I could that. just have like a, like people mail food into my mouth and mm. video games into the Xbox itself, I was just... <sighs> Oh yeah. I, I just want to be like a floating cloud of non Christmas next person. year, Max, I, I tell you what. Bedpan. Bedpans for both bed of us. Bedpans. Okay, Excellent. so um yeah, speaking of bedpans, I guess, uh, the next story is a very special one, and I should probably watch what I say because it's like a minefield of subject matter <laughs> that will piss people off. Some folks from 4chan have made a Japanese style dating sim in which all the girls are disabled. Um yeah, this is a project that sprung from concept art posted way back in 2007 featuring a bunch of disabled anime schoolgirls. This sounds like the kind of typical pervy fetish stuff that 4chan is known for posting, but here we are five years later and it's actually turned into a full game from Four Leaf Studios. Hmm. The game is called Katawa Shoujo, which literally translates to disability girls. You play as a high schooler with cardiac arrhythmia, which is a heart condition that requires heavy medication. Um, after being transferred to a special school for sick kids, you make friends with your fellow students who suffer from various ailments, including blindness, deafness, missing limbs, and having serious scarring from burns like Anakin Skywalker. I'd just like to say that cardiac arrhythmia is a really boring disease because yeah. you can't even see it. Yeah, it could have been dropsy or something. Yeah, or Rickets. like... I was going to say retardation, but I That's don't think that really, counts. really offensive, yeah. Tara. Anyway, um, if you guys are expecting some kind of fucked up, X-rated, nasty, dirty gross game, I think you're going to be disappointed because from what I've seen so far, you perv, uh, the game's actually got a lot of heart and it's made in a surprisingly non-exploitative manner. Uh, a lot of people think dating sims and visual novels are just weird porn games, but that is not always the case. 
Uh, in any case, if you're curious, go check out Katawa Shoujo for yourself. It is a free download for Mac, Linux, and PC on katawa-shoujo.com. Yeah. I yeah. actually downloaded it today uh, while we were writing the show. Yeah. I'm going to play it tonight. I'm going to check it out. Check it out, see I'm what it's about. those stupid games I paid money for. But that's that's yeah. kind of cool when people make games and... And then make dude, them free. If, if 4chan is making, making games from stuff that was posted on there in 2007, it should be like... We're gonna mm -hmm. get like a how do I shot web game or like who knows maybe yeah. I just downloaded a virus onto my computer and it'll just post my history to 4chan or something. God, I hope not. Anyway, let's mm. thank our sponsor and then we will be back with more news. Only suckers pay full price and that is a scientific fact. So if you love alternative apparel brands like Kid Robot, Hurley, and Stussy, but hate spending all your extra cash on them. Listen up because you can score these premium brands and more at up to 80% off every day. There's a new invite-only shopping club in town called Jack Threads, and they've got all the street, skate, and surfwear brands you can shake a stick at, at prices that will melt your brain, because they're hot. There is a wait list to join, but if you head to jackthreads.com slash destruct, you can skip the wait and get instant access to everything they offer right this second. Again, that is jackthreads.com slash destruct for all your clothing needs. So every so often we get sent things here at the studio from companies. Sometimes it's games, sometimes it's t-shirts or stickers or other merchandise, and sometimes it's totally random and unexpected. And a couple of weeks ago we received one of these Pelican cases, courtesy of Pelican.com, and we knew just right away what we had to do with it. Take a look. Hey guys, Max and Tara here from the internet. We get sent things at our show every so often, yep. and the latest thing we got here is this Pelican watertight protector case. Now, normally these things are used to protect your valuables from traveling or roving gangs of badgers, but we're gonna do something a little different with it today. Our valiant producer, Zach Miner, has kindly volunteered his Xbox for us, and it happens to fit perfectly. Yep. So we're gonna toss it in there, and then try to see if we can destroy it. Let's get a look at his face first. Yeah. Yep. All right. Let's have some fun. Behold, the mighty Xbox. Get to the pelican, okay? Get out of here. Test number one, the ball and chain. Hit it. Oh, God. This was a bad idea. Oh. Oh, wow. This is fun. This is really fun. Whoa. Okay. All right. So that was good. Um, I don't think the Xbox took much of a hit, though. Number two, the slinky. Oops. Commencing testing. Test number three, possibly the cruelest test of all. It's down to you and me, you one-eyed freak. And now for our fourth and final test, Hit, the hit. rage test. I was, oh, you named it that? Yeah, what were you going to call it? I was going to call it the hitting it with a bunch of shit test. That works too. Let's do it. Okay, let's begin. Boxing gloves. got some heft to it. That's what she said. Stop teabagging the pelican case. Oh, wow. Okay. All right. This is, this is getting weird. Finally. That showed it. Yeah. All right. Well, I feel way better. How yeah, about that you? Was, that was cathartic. That's good. Let's open her up. See if she's still ticking. Zach, please do the honors. Oh, look at that. It opens. Our, well, she so looks it's fine. It's in one piece. Yeah. Now let's see if it actually works. Zach, go plug in your toy. Yep. Now we honestly we don't know if this is gonna uh, 
if this is protected or not. We're going to find out in just a second. This is not some kind of crazy staged magic trick. This mm -hmm. is us uh, actually doing science research. Yes, science. That's a good word for it. Yes. Good job, Max. You could call it that. All right, let's see what we got here. It says no signal. Oh, up? it's, oh, yes. wow. All right, Zach, well, today's your lucky day. Thank you, Pelican, for sending us the cases and letting us test them out in our own fun yeah. fashion. We hit it with a dildo. Yeah, and uh, shit, I guess we'll have to try harder next time. Nope, no trying harder yep. next time. Yep, it's going to happen. Yep. Do you have any other uh, systems we could no. try? And no more. No? No more. Okay. That's it. All right, well, until next time. Thanks, Pelican. Bye-bye. Well, yeah. I'm happy to report that the Xbox is still functioning perfectly, although our producer, Zach, did suffer from some minor loss of dignity. <laughs> because so his last name is Minor, you see. Yeah, yeah he is a minor loss I actually loss wrote of in a line for you that says, excellent joke, Tara. So I feel, laughed. Feel free to say it. Okay, um, that was a thing we did for work, though. We have, we have fun with that. It was a ridiculous job. That was obviously before Christmas break, as you might have yeah. noticed from the difference in hair. <laughs> um, but yeah, thank you, Pelican, for sending those, those cases. Um, and I'm sorry, Zach, but we're going to continue to try and destroy your shit every day. Ha 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 ha! Yeah. Anyway, tomorrow I'm going to go check out Hitman Absolution for a hands-off preview, but I'll still get to check out some gameplay. If you guys have any burning questions about the new Hitman game, I believe it's the first one in six years, uh, be sure to leave them in the comments below or tweet them to our official Destructoid Show Twitter, at Detoid Show. And as always, you can follow me and Tara personally on the Twitter. I'm at Max Scoville, and she is at Tara Longest. And we are going to be back here on Friday with another one of our patented, not really, live shows. That's happening right here, youtube.com slash detoid or revision3.com slash watch at 3.30 p.m. Pacific time. And I hope to see you guys then. Good night. We should patent it. We should. <laughs>